Hello, my dear friend. Welcome to another Bible study with Victory Church. I am Jean, the founding pastor of this church from Odessa, Texas. I say hello to you and welcome to another broadcast. Today we are going to reflect on the chapter 16 of the letter, the Apostle Paul to the Romans, verse 5. And I invite you to go to our website, thechurch.us. From there, you can connect to the Vimeo channel, the YouTube channel, the Roku channel, the Apple channel, our podcast, and you also in the website will be able to download wonderful ebooks, audiobooks, tons of materials that are available for you. Today, we read from the easy to read version, and we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, guide us through this reflection. And this is the reading. Also, give greetings to the church that meets in the house of Priscilla and Aquila. Give greetings to my dear friend Epanetus. Epanetus, or something like that. <laughs> He was the first person to follow Christ in Asia. Certainly, this Greek name, I didn't get it right. Ephanatus or something like that. <laughs> well, and in fact, you know, it is funny that I mentioned this because through all my life, I have met people with uh, strange names like you did, like you have. And uh, for some people, even my name could be weird. But it doesn't really matter when you think about it. This passage is just gorgeous to me because... Uh, The memories, the value of those uh, cell groups, we called them back in the 80s, cell groups. And then we started to call the, what we named them? I, I think I said church in the house or church house, something like that. And then small groups and then Bible study groups, uh, any number of groups, you know, groups of, of love, groups of encouragement, groups of this and that. The point is, Priscilla and Aquila were a couple that helped Paul tremendously, and they were willing to even give their lives. If you remember in the previous episode, we talked about that. They, in their home, they host this group where people came and have fellowship. That is one thing that I want to talk today to you. The importance of meeting with other believers Sometimes you can meet uh, in a cafe, you can meet in a restaurant even, but honestly, the best place to meet always is in a home. Why is that? Well, because there, there is uh, more, more privacy, of course, and you have the opportunity to discuss different things, uh, not necessarily with the interruption or noise of the surrounding things like in a restaurant or a cafe it could happen, you know that. And uh, there is something special about meeting in a home rather than meeting in a classroom in the church is the fact that it's more personal. And that is the key word today in this reflection, being personal. Some people just hesitate the idea of being too personal Some people actually hate the idea of becoming too personal with church people or with their pastor, etc. And uh, I understand that. But what they don't know is they are missing something beautiful, beautiful in their lives. All my life, I have enjoyed the groups in homes, the Bible studies at home, the cell groups, meeting with my Christian friends, Whether it's just by reading one passage of the scripture and discussing that with somebody, the leader of the group, or going through a book, or watching a video, or commenting out of the sermon the pastor gave us a previous Sunday, or maybe we are studying a series. It doesn't matter, really. The important thing to me has been always that when I meet with my friends in a home, I have the opportunity to get to know them better, and vice versa. They get to know me better as well. And when you are going through those groups, you experience beautiful things that I want to encourage you today to consider becoming part of a group in a home. And why is important? It's important because 
First of all, you will learn that in your walk with the Lord, in your Christian life, you have the opportunity to share your life with others, and actually others will share it with you. Usually in those groups, we have the time for the prayers, and a lot of people say this is the Christian gossip <laughs> because people are saying, well, I have this problem in my work, I have this problem in my home, I have this situation, and on and on. Or simply somebody says, I want us to pray for my friend or my sister or whomever that is in trouble. And everybody seems to be interested in praying. But the truth is a lot of people just love the idea of gossiping, regardless if it's with the wrong motive or the right motive. The truth is there we take the time to pray for people. And they can pray for you as well. It is so wonderful. Also, you know, a home gives the opportunity to people to bring a friend. You know how interesting is that, that uh, people that are kind of curious about God and the Bible, they are more willing to go to a house sometimes rather than going to a church. Sometimes the church is intimidating for certain people, but a house is kind of a more casual environment, less intimidating. And they say, well, you know, if I go to other people's house for, for any reason, well, I'll go with you to your study in that house. And when they get to know the members of the church that are meeting, sometimes they will find that there are one or two that they don't go to church. True. Some of those people going to small groups or Bible groups or cell groups, they not necessarily go to the service on Sunday. Simply, they just love the camaraderie, the fellowship, the friendship they experience in those groups. And there is nothing wrong with individuals that for a season, they stay in that format. It's not ideal. Why is that? Because the format that we follow in a group, in a house, it is a format more oriented to a, a an exchange of information and feelings between everybody there. You understand? It's like, like an exchange of opinions. How do you see this? How do you feel about that? People talk and share, etc. You see, that's, that's more horizontal, if you like. While when you go to the worship service, it's different because mainly there is more vertical. It's more like what God has to say to me and what do I want to give God today through my worship, through the singing, and also through my prayers, etc., my service to God. Those are two different formats. The group in a home is essential for a believer to grow. It's essential because there is where actually you are going to experience a lot of things that you don't experience in the service. But at the same time, if you are part of a group, you must move to the next level, which is become part of the people worshiping God on Sunday, because there you are going to experience the fullness of the church. The church is the people, but the church service is where all the people get together to worship the name of our Lord God. Now, speaking about this guy who was the first person that became a believer in the ministry of Paul here in Asia. Do you have any, any idea the impact of this guy in his family and everybody else that he knew? You know, we don't have records of what happened with his life. But I want you to know something. When someone gets to know the Lord God, when someone is blessed to get to know who Jesus is, what the Lord Jesus did for this person, is going to be to become a big transformation in the life of that individual. You think about yourself. I think about myself. I became a believer and now I'm here spreading the word for many, many years because the Lord Jesus made the difference in my life. The Lord Jesus makes the difference in my life. I invite you to be part of a group and encourage unbelievers to come there. It's a great place where people can be saved. Baby, let's see if you can do this. Yes, search app. 
G on TV. You got this, honey? It's on. That's right. Man, you're a genius. Old people get so happy with something so simple. By Giancarlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Hey, 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 hey. That's all, that's all, that's all, folks. <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> Ciao.